Hey everyone and welcome to Mac Touch Plus. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the more advanced features of Automator. If you're unfamiliar with Automator, Mac Touch has an introductory guide that it published previously, the link for which you can find at the end of this article. I'd recommend reviewing this before continuing. We're going to be creating four different workflows today, all demonstrating a different feature of Automator. The first thing to do is launch Automator, found in your Applications folder. Our workflow is going to be a print plugin that customises how we save web receipts for online purchases. This is a workflow that can be triggered during the print options. If you've ever seen the PDF button to either save your document as a PDF or print as PDF, this will appear in the same section. Under Files and Folders, select Rename Finder Items. Automator will warn you that this will modify the original file and suggests we copy the file first. Since we're dealing with something we're printing from a website, we can select Don't Add. Select Add Text and enter Online Receipt. Change it to be before the file name. Add either a space or an underscore to separate it from the file name. We're also going to move the file somewhere useful. Select Move Finder Items and I'm going to create a new folder called Receipts to place it in. Save the workflow with the name Save Receipt. Minimize Automator and then open Safari or any website browser and attempt to print something. I'm going to visit google.com and just print their homepage. In the PDF menu, you'll see the Save Receipt workflow. Click it and then check the Receipts folder. There it is, however, we could make it a little more useful since there's not a lot of information there. Go back to Automator and let's add the date and time the file was created. We use the same action as before, rename finder items and then customise it to suit. We're going to take this one step further and since we're saving the receipts as PDF files, let's add some keywords and metadata for easy spotlight searching. Under the PDF column, select Set PDF Metadata. Change the subject to Web Receipt and also add some keywords. I'm using the keywords Receipt, Purchase and Invoice. Once you've made these changes, save the workflow and then go back to your browser.
As we can see, the receipt file now has a date stamp. If we open it in preview and view the information, it will also show the subject and keywords. However, the best feature is that we're able to use Spotlight to search, since the keywords instantly show the file. Our next workflow will let us scale and convert images with a simple click of the mouse. Create a new automated document and select Service. We're going to create a service for Finder to be used with images. Use the Scale Images action from the Photos tab. Again, Automator will warn us that it will convert original files and would we prefer to copy them first. In this instance, we do, so click Add. We'll leave the copied items on the desktop for now. Under the Scale Images option, click Options and tick Show this action when workflow runs. This pauses the workflow and we have to confirm to continue, but it lets us specify the size we want to use. This can mean we can quickly resize images to whatever size we want, and we don't need to build a workflow for different sizes. Now, drag the change type of images action to the workflow. We don't need to copy the items again as we're already doing that, so select Don't Add. Again, let's have this appear whilst the workflow runs, so we can always specify what type of file we want. So click Options, Show this action when workflow runs. Save the service as Convert and Resize. I've got some images that are far too large and need resizing in my Pictures folder. If I now right click on these images, I can see the option to scale and convert. This might appear under a menu called Services if you have others installed. Select it and you'll then see the options for size and then image type. Once picked, the converted files will all appear on the desktop. Once the files have been converted, you will see the images change on the desktop. This way, we still retain the original TIFF files in our Pictures folder, but we have a copy of the files in JPEG format on the desktop. Next, we're going to create an application that downloads all the available articles from the MacTuts RSS feed and save them in a text file. Under the Internet section, select Get Specified URL and specify the MacTuts URL. This is mac.tutsplus.com. Next, drag across Get Feeds from URL and then Get Text from Articles. Under the Text section, select New Text File from the Text Actions and give it a name. In this case, I'm calling it MacTuts Articles. Save the application to your desktop, and once saved, double click to launch.
Whenever you run an Automator application, you can see how the workflow is progressing from the small cog in the menu bar. This is useful if your workflow takes some time and you need to be sure it's definitely running. Now our workflow has completed, there's a new text file on the desktop called MacTut's Articles. Effectively, this has taken all the articles currently available in the RSS feed and saved them into TextEdit. Finally, we're going to create an app we can drag files onto which will generate a customised zip file. This will involve the use of automated variables. Variables allow us to use predefined strings of text and file or folder locations that otherwise would need to be manually entered. First of all, drag over the Create Archive action from the Files and Folders tab. Open the Variables section of Automator by clicking the small button with two lines at the bottom of the window. It's the second button along. Right click and select Create Variable. The variable name is just for your reference, the text is what will be used in the workflow. I want this to be called Completed Work. Drag the variable to the archive name and it will then use that text string. Save the application to your desktop and then drag a file across. I'm going to drag across those pictures from before and Automator will automatically generate a zip file with those pictures inside. If I repeat the process, it won't overwrite the file but it will create another one with an increment at the end. The file name I've created is pretty vague, let's add a date and timestamp but use a variable instead. Back in Automator, open the Variables panel and double click on the current time and today's date. The blue V icons represent variables that have further customization options. For example, the current time can be displayed in many different formats, the same with today's date. I will leave you to alter the options to best suit you and so that they work well in a file name. A quick tip is that if you leave the time as the default variable, a colon can't be used as part of a file name. Automator will substitute any colons with a backslash, however this makes the time look like a date. Now we have our variables set up, we need to add them to the create archive action. This will let us use a customised name. An unfortunate problem with Automator is that the text box is just too small to work well in. I'd recommend if you'd like to use the time at the end of the file name to drag that up first and then you can put today's date in front of it. Once you've got your name set up, save the application and try dragging the files over again. Let's view the desktop folder in more detail, and as you can see, we have a more customised name. We have the completed work field, the time and the date.
And that's it. Hopefully you should now have an understanding of how some of the more advanced features of Automator work. To help you further, I've included the Automator workflows that I've created as source files that you can download and experiment with. Thanks for watching this MacTuts Plus tutorial.